In all universal spiritual teachings, it's described that there are two kinds of teachers. Those who teach us what to do and those who teach us what not to do. So Confucius, he says something very nice. He says, if I am walking with two other men, each of them will serve as my teacher. I will pick out the good points of the one and imitate them and the bad points of the other and correct them in myself. When we see persons of worth, we should think of equaling them. When we see persons of a contrary character, we should turn inward and examine ourselves. So therefore, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it describes uh, what to do and what not to do. So what to do? Shreya Maide Kona Shreya Jivado Hoi Sa Krishna Bhakta Sangha Vina Shreya Nahi Ar. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says to Ramananda Roy, what is the most auspicious thing in this world? And Ramananda Roy says, Krishna Bhakta Sangavina, to associate with devotees. So it describes what we should do. We should associate with devotees. On the other hand, what not to do. That's also described. Asatsanga Tiaga E Vaishnava Achar Sri Sangi Eka Asadu Krishna Bhakta R. We shouldn't associate with non devotees. Now, who's the greatest non devotee? Prahlad Maharaj says, the greatest non devotee in the seventh council, chapter 8. Verse 9 through 10, he says the greatest non-devotee is our uncontrolled and misguided mind. <laughs> Prahlad tells his father, except for the uncontrolled and misguided mind, there is no enemy within this world. So this is the humble perspective. The proud perspective is, I'm a devotee, and this Prabhu is not a devotee. But from the humble perspective, um, my mind is a non-devotee. And myself, my soul is trying to become the devotee. So we may say, my external enemy, he goes that way, his way, and I go my way, and I will not have to associate with him because we shouldn't associate with non-devotees, right? But if our mind is the greatest non-devotee, then what can we say? My mind goes his way, and I go another way. You cannot do that. So what's the conclusion? If our mind is the greatest non-devotee, then what's the solution? Mm -hmm. Then you make your mind a devotee because <laughs> you have no other options. <laughs> it's just very simple. Even if you're whoever you live with, your child, your parents, your in-laws, whoever, you can't say they go one way and I go another way. We have to split the bill. But So what do you do? You try to make them into devotees the best as you can. So... Um, sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Koi, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva City Ho. It's described that even by one moment's association with a sincere devotee, then one will attain all success. Just like Haridasa Kaur, he was a very, I'll just share this story. So once upon a time, there was a, a renunciate, a celibate monk named Haridas Thakur. And he was given instructions by the Lord to preach Christian consciousness in every town and village in the world. So he, this is precisely what he did. So one day he came to the town of a politician named Ramachandra Khan. And so in this way, Ramachandra Khan was the most popular person in his town at the time because he was a politician. People voted him in. But when Haridasa Kaur started to share uh, Krishna consciousness with all the townspeople, they became more attracted to him than the politician. Why? Because why is a computer attractive? It's connected to its power source. If a computer is disconnected from its power source, it's unattractive. So, in the Gita, Krishna says, Aham sarvasa prabhava mata sarvam prabhata te iti matu abhajate ma buddha bhava samavita. Krishna says, I am the power source of everything. And those who are buddha bhava samavita, what does buddha mean? Those who are truly enlightened connect to me. And what makes a person attractive? Good qualities, right? If somebody's humble, if they're appreciative, if they're forgiving, that makes them attractive. That indicates that they're connected to Krishna. And why is a person unattractive? They're proud, they're envious and visual. That indicates they're disconnected from Krishna. So the primary quality also to determine whether a person is connected to Krishna or disconnected from Krishna is that a person like Hari Dasakur, if he's connected to Krishna, they, the townspeople realize Haridasa Kaur, he loves people and he uses things. Ramachandra Khan, we realize he loves things and he uses people. So the indication that a person is connected to Krishna is that they love people and they use things. One who's disconnected from Krishna, they love things and they use people. So therefore, there's a saying, 
Love people, not things. Use things, not people. So in this way, the townspeople became so attracted to Haridasa Kaur. So because Ramachandra Khan started to lose his thunder, so to speak, he sent a very beautiful seductive prostitute to make Haridasa Kaur fall down. And so um, in this way, this prostitute tried to seduce him. But she, she, she approached Haridasa Kaur. She says, my dear Haridasa Kaur, you are so um, handsome. And if we do not unite, I will simply die. And so in this way, Haridasa Kaur says, yes, after I'm done finishing my, my sadhana, my japa, then I will unite with you. So in this way, Haridasa Kaur chanted one day. <clears throat> and at the end of that day, she says, what happened? I thought you, we will unite. He was like, well, I'm not done with my rounds. Now, as practicing sadhakas, when we say we're not done with our rounds, we actually mean it. <laughs> we have a lot of rounds to either do or to make up. But Haridasa Kaur, because he's three nada pisuni chena toro iva sahishnu na mani na mana dena kirtaniya sadahari, because he's so humble, he has nam ruchi, taste with our holy name, which means what? He's always connected to Krishna. He never stops chanting. <laughs> so he never finishes round. His not finishing his round is different from us not finishing our round. He never <coughs> finishes rounds because he's Kirtaniya Sada Hadi. He's always chanting the names of the Lord. So in this way, the prostitute came back the second day. Haridasa Kaur did the same thing. Oh, I'm not finished with my round. She came back a third day. In this way, because of the, the association of Haridasa Kaur, she revealed her, her uh, covert plan. She's like, I was sent here by this politician named Ramachandra, uh, Ramachandra uh, Khan to make you fall down. But I can see that you're a great saint and you're bringing tears to my eyes. So why is a, a um, what's, um, the, the analogy is this, Prabhupada will often give this analogy. Just as metal, just, a, just as metal becomes like fire, if it associates with fire, so also by the fire, of Haridasa Kaur's bhakti, he transformed the prostitute into a great personality and not the other way around. His association influenced her and not the other way around. So in much the same way, there's another analogy. When fire associates with metal, metal could be molded into any shape the blacksmith desires. So by the fire of Haridasa Kaur's association, he molded this prostitute into an outstanding human being. So that's the lesson we can all take on our, on our life. The conclusion is, is that since we cannot leave the worst association we have in this world, our mind, then our job is to make it into a devotee by the fire of our own bhakti. In much the same way, the more humble response is that if our external enemies, if they're not being transformed, then we have to ask ourselves, these great souls, they were able to transform the most sinful people. So in this way, we could, there's always room for improvement to deepen our humility. And this is one point to deepen our humility. If others are not being transformed, we have to question what is our own sadhana, what is our own bhakti, what is our own devotion? How much do are we sending out love despite not receiving love? So therefore, Orva Bahu Kadi Kohan Shuna Sarva Loka Nama Suchi Ganti Pada Kanta H Loka. Krishna Das Kavidash Goswami. He says, one should string this verse around the thread of the holy name and wear it on one's neck for continuous remembrance. And what is that verse? More humble than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree, and ready to offer all respect to others without expecting respect in return. Although Haridasa Kaur knew that this prostitute was sent to, to make him fall down, he still showed their love. He still showed their respect. And, of course, there's a difference between disagreement and disrespect. No problem. We all have disagreements, but we don't call devotees out of the name. We may disagree with them. And um, but this is just a humble point, a, a nice lesson to take that if others are not transforming. Yes, we we have to go back to the drawing board and the drawing board is how 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 much do we love Krishna? How much we're sending our positive energy and how devoted are we to reading our books during our sadhana, etc. And um, in this way, it may or may not be true because Prahlad Maharaj, despite his um, unconditional bhakti, he was not able to transform Hirani Kashipu. In the final analysis, only Krishna could transform people's heart. But still, to keep us humble, it's very nice to say that all oh, the reason I cannot transform this person is because I have to be humble myself. How, how much love am I emanating with my sadhana, with my bhakti? So that's one lesson I try to keep in mind to um, 
it, there's a saying, your prayer for another person may or may not change them, but it always changes you. There's another one. It says, what is ang a wise man was once asked, what is anger? He gave a very beautiful answer. Anger is a punishment we give to ourselves for somebody else's mistake. So the process who made a mistake, she tried to make Haridasa core fall down. Did he become angry? No. So in this way, uh, he harnessed his anger. Just like fire that's controlled can be utilized for so many things. But fire that's uncontrolled will become destructive. So Haridasa core, how do you control the fire of your thoughts first and action through your sadhana bhakti? In this way, you can use fire to give light, to give heat, to cook, so many things. So in this way, because Haridasa core was devoted to his um, sadhana, his, his humility, then he was able to transform others. So that's our... Um, I guess that's our topic for today. So thank you very much. Shri Hopa Kijai.